forever. Your soul may be lost, lost forever, lost in hell. Friend, I wonder tonight, do you ever think about that? Your soul should be lost forever. I'm so glad solid ground has chosen that last piece tonight. They didn't choose it by accident. The Lord laid it upon their heart because my scripture reading tonight brings us all to the most important place on earth. The most important place on earth tonight, my friend, is the place which is called Calvary. Calvary is the place tonight, my friends. Calvary is the place where wickedness was met with forgiveness. Calvary was the place tonight where the hosts of heaven waged war on the hosts of hell. Calvary is the place tonight where the blackest black can be made the whitest white. Calvary is the place tonight where sinners, wicked sinners, can become wonderful saints. Calvary tonight is the place where, where bonds can be broken, where shackles can be shattered. Calvary tonight is where burdens are turned into blessings. And Calvary tonight is where night has turned to day. Calvary tonight is the greatest place on God's earth because that tonight is the place where God's Son was crucified to an old rugged cross for you, my sinner friend. But when you come to the place called Calvary tonight, I want you to notice that there are three crosses that stand side by side. And each of those three crosses tonight, each of them has their, has their own story to tell. But tonight God brings us to one cross. And to this one cross, and from this one cross, God wants to speak to us. God wants to speak to us tonight on the story of one thief. The story of one thief and his cross. And the story of this one thief and his cross on Calvary's hill that day. I want you to notice that there's four chapters to this man's story. First of all, when we come to this one thief and the story of his cross, the first and foremost thing we see that here's a man condemned for the cross. I want you to take a look with me in your mind's eye tonight to this one thief condemned for the cross because there's a message from this man. And there's a message that comes from this cross. And the message is, be sure, be sure your sin 
will find you out. You see, friend, tonight when we look at each of those three crosses, one word links them all. One word. The one word tonight is sin. To die in sin, or dying in sin. But the one man in the middle cross isn't dying in sin. He's dying for sin. And my dear unsafe friend tonight, the man on the middle cross died there for your sin. And he died there for me. But the story of this one thief and his cross tonight brings to all of us to the reality of all our sin. Because the message that comes from this one man's cross tonight is, be sure your sin will find you out. The story of this one thief and his cross, we see tonight con him condemned for the cross. You see, this one thief tonight on his cross, he reminds me tonight that sin has a consequence. No man or woman, no young person will ever get off scot-free from sin. Sin has its consequences. And friend, tonight, you know what the Bible tells us? The Bible says that for we all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Do you realize tonight that you've sinned? This one man's cross tonight, and this one man tonight tells the story that we've all sinned and have come short of the glory of God. And my dear unsaved man or woman tonight, listen to me. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin's death. My friend, sin tonight is your greatest enemy. Your sin tonight condemns you. Your sin tonight brings you under the judgment of God. Your sin tonight is dragging you to the fires of hell. Your sin is love. Never, never think lately of sin. This one thief, his sin condemns him for the cross. D. L. Moody, the great evangelist of the 19th century, was approached by a lady one time. After he preached a sermon entitled, Condemned for Hell, this wee lady came up to him and said, Mr. Moody, Mr. Moody, you mean to tell me, Mr. Moody, that my wee Johnny who doesn't drink, who doesn't smoke, and my wee Johnny who was, who was baptized when he was a baby, and my wee Johnny who would never miss church, you mean to tell me, Mr. Moody, that if my wee Johnny dies, he's going to hell? My wee Johnny who always reads his Bible? My wee Johnny who even prays at night. You mean to tell me, Mr. Moody, if my wee Johnny dies, he's going to hell? Mr. Moody paused. And he looked into this lady's eyes and said these words. Who is the liar, love? Who is the liar? Is it you? Or is it God? God reminds all of us tonight. We're all sinners. And in 1 John chapter 1, it says this, If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. Don't tell me, love, now you're going to call God a liar. We're 
We're all sinners tonight in the sight of a holy God. And listen to me, my dear friend. You're condemned already. The story of this one thief and his cross reminds us all tonight upon the grounds in which men are condemned, condemned on the grounds of sin. The Lord Jesus said, He that believeth not is condemned already. And my friend, if you never believe you're a sinner, you'll never believe to be saved. Because the first thing you must believe is to believe that you're a condemned sinner. And my friend, you need to believe that tonight. You need to believe what God's Word says, sin when it is finished, brings forth death. And sin tonight is the cancer of the soul. And sin tonight is what condemns your immortal soul, your sin. And when we read this one man's story, slowly and carefully, I want you to notice that you can see yourself there. Just as this man sin condemned him, so our sin tonight condemns us. Condemned before the Almighty. The story of this one man, this one thief on his cross, we see tonight him condemned for the cross. But when we move into the second chapter of this story, now we see this one man crucified to the cross. And I want you to notice tonight, as he was condemned for the cross, we see his penalty. Now when we see him crucified to the cross, we feel his pain. God wants you to see tonight, my dear unsafe friend. Listen to me. Sin has no mercy. Sin might have its pleasures. Sin might have its prosperities. Sin might have its fun. Sin may have its laughs. But sin tonight, sin has no mercy. Boys, if there, ever, if there ever was a, a song that this one thief could sing, he would have to sing the song, Sin will take you further. Do you want to go? Believe me tonight, sin will take you tonight further than you want to go. And I want you to see this man tonight, this one thief, as they crucify him to the cross, Watch him tonight <clears throat> as he fights and as he kicks and as he tries with every ounce in his body to prevent himself from being crucified. And all that sin once afforded him has now fled. And all the friends and all the cohorts that brought this man perhaps to this place. They're now nowhere to be seen, and they've all scarpered and fled. You see, sin, sin will bring you to a point where it suddenly leaves you, and it leaves you there alone. Listen, that's the way all worldly friends work. I found that to my own peril. You're a great fellow until you get into trouble. And once you're caught, 
they go. Remember one time, it was on a Saturday in 1981, I caught up with two bullies. Two bullies that were bullying my brother Brian. There was one Friday night to give our boy an awful hiding. I always believe in having a go at bullying the bullies. And I got one of them. And I do say this to me, she may give him some lesson. And the bully went home and told his daddy. And my friend who was with me that day says, come on quick into our house, out into his house. And daddy came looking for me. Daddy came to the door. And my supposed to be friend says, get you out of here before I don't want my house touched. And as Daddy was knocking on the front door, I scarpered through the back door. But that's worldly friends for you. You see, friend the world and sin will leave you hanging when trouble comes. As this man was being nailed to the cross, his friends, his sin, were nowhere, were nowhere to be seen. His sin couldn't do anything for him now. Because you see, unsafe friends, sin can do nothing for you, only condemn you. And this man tonight, this man tonight, this man is crucified now to the cross. And he now has nothing, only regrets and remorse, and he never thought for one minute that he would get caught, but he was caught. Because be sure, the old text says, be sure your sin will find you out. Oh, this the story of this one thief and his cross. We see him condemned for the cross. We see him, we see him crucified to the cross. And my dear unsaved friend tonight, let no man, let no worldly friend stop you from getting saved. Friend, your worldly friends might laugh, they might scorn. Where are they when you die? Where will they be when you're in the torments of hell? Oh, they'll walk away from your grave on the day of your funeral and they'll say, I can't believe it, he's gone. I can't believe it's just gone. And they'll walk away and forget about you. And they're the very ones that stop you from getting saved. But this one thief, he wasn't going to let the crowd and he wasn't going to let the other thief do the most important thing. Because the one that was condemned for the cross and the one that was crucified to the cross in the third chapter, we see him now calling from the cross. Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. This man saw what he needed to see. And this man saw, my friend, what you need to see. Not only are you a condemned sinner, but Christ is the Savior of sinners. And my friend, you need to see this. And you need to get hold of it. Tonight. This man saw that the man in the middle of the cross was there to save him. And he's calling from the cross. And he realizes, he realizes that sin has no mercy. Ah, but the Savior is all mercy. And sin 
has fled. But the Savior forgives. Notice what he does. He can only do love what you must do. And that's call. Call. You see, my friend, this man couldn't do anything to better himself. This man couldn't change his past. Friend, his hands were nailed to the cross. His feet were crucified to the cross. This man couldn't budge. But praise God, he could believe. Friend, his hands were pierced. But glory to God, his heart wasn't pierced. Because this man could call. He couldn't clean himself up. He couldn't change his past. All he could do was call out, listen, my dear own safe friend, listen from this one man tonight. You can call. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The story of this one thief on his cross has a tremendous story. Condemned I, crucified I, now he's calling. My friend, he's not only crucified and condemned, he's now calling. And here we have his plea. Condemned his penalty. Crucified his pain. Calling his plea. And the man who was calling from the cross, glory to God, was converted upon the cross. Do you know what this one thief, the story of this one thief on his cross teaches me? The Lord can save any person in any place and in any position. He was converted upon the cross. You know, friend, tonight, how right Fanny Crosby was when she penned those lovely words, the vilest offender that truly believes that moment from Jesus, a pardon receives. My friend, the Lord Jesus tells us in Luke 5, I haven't come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And he's come to call you tonight. And friend, as he looked upon this one thief, the Lord wasn't looking upon the sins of the past. The sin saw, the Savior saw, a perishing soul calling out. And my friend, in this man's dying moments, he's calling out to me. Friend, you can call out to me just where you are. And the Lord will hear you. And glory to God, he'll save you. Do you believe it? Yeah. Oh, believe it, my dear friend, believe it. The dying thief rejoiced to see him. That fountain in his day. And then you know, friend, listen to me. I crucified he was by the hands and by the feet. This man could do nothing for himself but call. He hadn't time to be christened. He hadn't time to be confirmed. He hadn't time to change. Just call. And the Lord heard him. And the Lord saved him. And as you look to this one thief and his cross tonight, now listen to me. He dies, he dies in pain, but he dies in peace because he's at peace with God. There's a difference. There's a difference, you know. 
There's a difference when you're at a bedside where one's dying saved and a person's dying unsaved. And I'll tell you there's a difference in the two bedsides. At the deathbed of a saint, sometimes there's pain. Ah, but there's peace. And the story of this one thief on his cross tells me as he dies in pain, he dies in peace because he's now at peace with God. And Jesus says today, in spite of your past, in spite of your, in spite of your, your present, today you'll be with me in paradise. Sinner friend, the story of this one thief on his cross reminds me, the Lord never turned seeking sinners away. And he'll not turn you away. You know, I don't know. I don't know the way I'm going to die. If the Lord doesn't rapture me, if the Lord doesn't come back in my lifetime, well, I'm going to die. I don't, die, I don't, I can't tell you whether I'm going to die slowly and die painfully. I don't know whether I'm going to die suddenly or peaceably. But there's one thing I do know. I'm going to die in peace because the Lord Jesus is in my heart as my Savior. I'm not going to die in peace because I was baptized or confirmed. I'm going to die in peace because on the 26th of August, 1985, in the Church of Ireland in Ochnacloy, I came to Jesus as I was, weary, worn, and sad. I found in him a resting place. He has made me glad. And from that night to this night, I can tell you I've got the peace of God within my heart. And tonight that peace can be yours. The story of this one thief and his cross reminds me all men can be saved. And women and young people, they can be saved if they only but realize they're lost sinners who are loved by the Savior. And my friend tonight, the dying thief knew that day he was going to die. The dying thief knew that day he wasn't going to see night. And he knew he needed to call. And he knew he needed to come. And I pray tonight you'll know the need. And you'll come tonight to the Savior. You know why? Your soul may be drifting over the dead land tonight. Let's all bow in a wee word of prayer together. Every head bowed now and every eye closed. Remember the Lord is watching you and he's waiting. And I trust tonight you'll be wise and you'll come to him. You're here tonight and you're not saved. Friend, why don't you come out to Christ tonight? Why don't you call to him? Why why will you die in your sin and be lost in hell for all of eternity? And the Savior's here tonight. He waits. He calls. And perhaps, perhaps tonight, He's calling you. 
right now. Come unto me. I'll give you rest. Lord, tonight in the closing moments of this meeting, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God will do the work in the heart tonight and give the saving grace to one who may be halting between two opinions. O oh God, give the saving grace before it's forever for them. Too late. For we pray in our Saviour's name. Amen. And amen. 230 is our closing hymn. O sinner, the Saviour is calling for thee. Long, long has he called thee in vain. He called thee when joy lent its crown to thy days. He called thee in sorrow and pain. My friend tonight, listen to me. If you're troubled tonight, and you're concerned tonight, and you're afraid tonight, listen, that's God working in your heart, and God working in your soul. You come and see me. I'm here to help you. I'm here to listen. I'm not here to talk. I that dumb. I'm here to listen. Come and speak to me. Don't go home until you know it's well. Well, we are so.